Joining us on the program on the Mercedes-Benz Vans phone line is Jason Garrett. You there, Jason? I am here. Can oh, you hear me? Hey. Right? Oh, hey. hey, Coach. It's like you're sitting next to me. I felt like that was amateur hour on my end. I apologize. Yeah, I mean, you know what? Is that is that a broadcasting rookie mistake to just hop on your cell phone and do stuff like that? I mean, that could be that, Jason. Yeah, I think so. Know. I think so. I'm not that seasoned veteran that you are. You know what, uh, <laughs> Jason? I can just I can help with that sort of stuff from now uh, from now on for you. Congratulations on uh, on that gig with NBC. Congrats yeah, on that. Yeah, r- really excited about it, Rich. Um, I had the opportunity to do these USFL games all spring with uh, with the crew from NBC and I just can't tell you how impressed I am with everybody at NBC it's it's been an incredible experience right from the get go and to have the opportunity to continue that this fall is really exciting for me and so uh, what it, what what is your plan this fall what exactly are you going to be doing with NBC this fall i think i know but i'll just let you you know reveal what you yeah, got yeah i'm going to be part i'm going to be part of the sunday night uh, show football night in america uh, with Coach Dungy and Maria Taylor and Chris Sims and, and the whole crew that they have up there. And, uh, again, it's an extension of, of the work I, I, I've done in the USFL. And, uh, you know, I've gotten to know those guys really well through the years because, you know, with the Cowboys we were always playing, you know, three Sunday night games. So they became, uh, you know, friends of mine and uh, just have the opportunity to work with them Again, both in the USFL and now in the fall is exciting. Yeah, I know. And you've got three uh, Cowboys Sunday night football games already on the docket. You know uh, how things can get flexed around as well and flexed into right off the bat, Dallas and, and Tampa. And and so, you know, obviously you are going to be asked to uh, be uh, analytical um, and sometimes critical uh, of the Dallas Cowboys or uh, anybody that you may know and appreciate, certainly the Giants organization as well. Uh, what is your take on what the Cowboys have done this offseason? My opinion is that they've, they haven't taken a step forward. They've taken a step back. What are, what are your thoughts on the subject matter, Jason? Well, first of all, they had an awfully good year last year. And, uh, you know, they, they didn't get the job done uh, against San Francisco in the playoff game. And, uh, so the starting point is probably it's a really good football team, and I know many of those guys. Uh, you know, we drafted many of them, and I know the kind of I know the kind of men they have in that locker room and the leaders they have in that locker room. And there's no doubt in my mind that they're going to respond the right way. Uh, you know, one of the things that uh, th- that's been really impressive to me about the organization and that team is, you know, they they've continued the. You know the off-season program, the work ethic that that has been such a big part of that program. You know, this past year, you hear stories about everybody being there, 100% attendance, all throughout the off-season program. And again, I know Tyron Smith, you know, Zach Martin, Dak Prescott, Zeke Elliott. You know, all those guys that they have have been the cornerstone players on that team. So they'll respond the right way. The business of football is challenging, as we all know. You get these. You know these big-time players, and they have opportunities to go elsewhere in free agency, and it's hard to keep everybody. So sometimes people will look at that and say, "Hey, boy, they, there's this mass exodus." Uh, I don't know about that. I know they got a lot of really good cornerstone players there who've been great players for a long time, and they're excited about the young players they have. So I wouldn't bet against this team. So, what what advice would you give Mike McCarthy? I know he's got a trophy in the case. He's been around quite a bit, um, and and has his own frame of reference. But Dan Quinn is sitting there, defensive coordinator, and Jerry's already even said publicly, like, so many defensive coordinators and offensive coordinators stick around because they know they have a shot at the job, uh, eventually, using your name, even in that soundbite, to to prove a point that's why Dan Quinn stuck around. And McCarthy still has the job, you know, even though a vote of confidence was just given by Jerry moments uh, a couple days ago because of Sean Payton's name. So what advice would you give Mike McCarthy, Jason Garrett, having been in that position yourself for as long as you were? Well, I think the biggest thing for any, for any head coach and really for any player in the NFL is really just focus on yourself and what you need to do to be your best. And, and I know that's a cliche and everyone thinks that, well, that's coach speak and all of that. But it's so true. And, and, and it's so true, certainly in a place like Dallas. Uh, there's, a, there's a lot of there's a lot of people who make their living speculating about things and digging things up and stirring things up. That's just the world that we live in. You know, the days of Walter Cronkite telling you the news as it is, you know, at 6 o'clock every, every weekday evening, those are long gone. It's 24-hour news cycles, and, and, and we're trying to stir the pot. And so when you're in those roles, 
you have to just really focus on what you need to do to be your best. And this was a theme that we tried to use with all of our players through the years. You know, players getting into Twitter wars and all of this kind of stuff. It's like, hey, let's just lock in on what we need to do each day to be our best. And and, and when you're preaching that message to your team, sometimes you got to preach it to yourself. And you got to say, hey, everything that I'm trying to share with these guys to help them individually be their best, help our team be its best, you know, sometimes you got to say, hey, i I got to remind myself of those things. And, and not that you think about it a lot, but you're asked about it a lot. And so you just kind of lock in and say, hey, this is what I need to do to be my best today. Mike obviously is a fantastic coach, has been for a long time. He understands the importance of doing that. And, uh, and I think they have a really good team. And they obviously have a really good head coach and a lot of good players. And they got a chance to be a good team this year. What is it like to be in a meeting with Jerry Jones after a loss, Jason? What is that like? Oh, he, he, Jerry Jones is—he's a fascinating guy. Uh, yes, you, you he don't is. Have the success that, you don't have the success that he's had throughout his life, and really everything he's touched. Uh, he, he has amazing, uh, amazing abilities. He has amazing wisdom and intelligence about so many different topics. And uh, you know, I would say uh, he was incredible uh, after losses. He was incredible, uh, you know, when times were tough. Uh, his support for coaches and for players and, you know, when the football part of it was tough or, or things in your individual life were challenging, their deaths and those kinds of things, I mean, he, he was incredible. And, I, and I, I saw the examples through the years when I was playing there, when I was coaching there, when things like that happened for me, you know, I felt it personally. So, um, you know, there, there's a perception about Jerry Jones, and I think some of it from the outside might be accurate. Uh, but there are a lot of stuff uh, he's portrayed in a certain way uh, that, that I, I simply don't agree with. And uh, very fortunate to have the opportunity to have played uh, for him and to coach for him for many years. And uh, he's really made my life better. So I got nothing but great things to say about Jerry Jones. No, no and, I, and I'm not, I'm not, and I'm not fishing for you to say something negative about him, Jason. And just so I can stipulate that, you know, I, it's just it, it is a fast. You said he's incredible and he is fascinating. It just there's the general sense in Dallas that after all this time that he'll put his finger in the pot in a way that he should not uh, that might run detrimental to the to the ultimate success of this team. And uh, that's 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 what I'm trying to, you know, dive into here. Having you having had all that time with him, you know. Yeah, he was always so supportive. He always wanted to do what was necessary to win. And and I always felt like. I didn't do a good enough job communicating, you know, what we needed to do if there was a decision made that was against some of the things that I wanted to do, whether it was hiring someone or drafting someone or signing someone or make, making a decision about personnel or how we're doing things. And uh, to me, it's the coach's job in any organization to create the vision for what you want the team and the program to be. Mm. And it's your job to lead, and it's your job to lead upward to ownership to general managers, and certainly lead to your coaches and to your players and to all the staff members who work with the team. So anytime something didn't go in a direction that I felt like maybe we should have done it this way, I always put it back on myself to say, clearly I didn't communicate that well enough. I didn't make the argument the, the, the argument well enough to, to get the decision or the outcome that we wanted. Uh, it's a very collaborative organization. There's a lot of people. You have a lot of conversations about the decisions you want to make. Ultimately, Jerry is the owner, general manager. He makes the decisions. He's the one who drafts the player. But but I always felt like when we did a good job, when I did a good job communicating the vision, communicating the reason why we wanted this particular guy, and we created consensus throughout the organization, that's when we did our best work. And uh, And any time we fell short of that, I put it back on myself for not – doing my job well enough jason garrett here on the rich eisen show calling in from uh, canton ohio tom benson hall of fame stadium where the new orleans breakers and the birmingham stallions will battle in the south division final in the inaugural usfl playoffs that you can see on uh saturday eight eastern time on nbc and, and peacock um I, I i wish you good luck on that uh jason and uh, let's let's chat down the line i always love uh, running into you whenever I do, um, and uh, and certainly this is one of them. I really appreciate it, Jason. 
Rich, always enjoy it, man. Keep up the great work. Right back at you. I look forward to the call with you and uh, Jack Collinsworth coming up uh, on this weekend. You hey, take... we got Birmingham Stallions and New Orleans Breakers. Are you kidding me? Let's go. Let's go. It's <laughs> football. It's football. It's just I, I can't wait for the whole season to start. And then again to see you on Football Night in America, Maria Taylor, Tony Dungy, Chris Sims, and you. We'll chat again soon, hopefully, Jason. You be well. Thanks, man. Take okay. care. There's one and only Jason Gary here on the program.